Hi everyone, it's just Beth G here and welcome back to my channel. Woo! So today I have a pretty exciting video if you ask me. What I have decided to do is I'm going to show you around my bookshelf. But instead of showing you it all in a one and it just being kind of like this hefty video, I thought I would break it down into different sections. So this is actually going to be a five part series where I take you around my bookshelf. Now, I know my bookshelf is not the biggest, like don't get me wrong, I'm fully aware of that. But I think it's just going to be easier to digest if I do it this way. And I thought I would show you it in the way that I organise my books as well. So we're going to be going through my bookshelf by colour. Woo, doesn't that sound exciting? Basically, I'm going to be breaking down all of the books that I own by colour and showing you the different sections. So the section that I'm going to be showing you today is going to be my white section. So these are all of the books which have like white spines, which are all on this shelf. And there's a few down here. I also include yellow and like beige and and gold in that section. Uh, they're used as my transitional shades for me to go into my orange slash red slash pink section which I'm going to do next week. Then the third week I'm going to be showing you my blue slash green books. Then on the fourth week I'm going to be showing you my black books and then the last segment that I'm going to do is going to be showing you guys all of the book series that I own and yeah that's kind of basically the layout of how these next few videos are going to work. I'm fully aware that Lena Norms has also published a video like this. I did take inspiration from that video, I'm not going to sit here in front but also I just thought it was a really good way of how to break down your bookshelves especially when I didn't want to give a full bookcase tour and I didn't want to overwhelm myself by talking too much because you know you get the dry mouth and then also you kind of become disconnected with what you're talking about so I thought aha yes that's how I sort my bookshelves out so I would like to do something similar because I think it's a really lovely way to break down your books and show them to people so that's what I'm gonna do uh, disclaimer before I go into it I bought the majority of these books I'm gonna say about four or five years ago I know that a lot of them were released in 2014 I don't have the most updated bookshelf. I did actually buy quite a few in lockdown to diversify my bookshelves a little bit more and kind of get me more up to speed with what's been coming out at the moment. But I just wanted to mainly do this disclaimer to say I probably don't know what these books are about either. So this is going to be a journey for the both of us. And wow, what an exciting journey that is. So we're going to do that and I'm just going to shut my door because there's a breeze and I'm just gonna dive right in and show you my books so let's go let me kind of come here and break down my bookshelf so here we have my TBR book cube and basically on this side here which is my left those are the books that I have read and are ready to be put into a wrap-up video. The ones on the right are the ones that I want to read. And then the ones in the middle is a book series that I'm reading at the moment and hopefully going to be doing a video essay on. Then the next book shelf cube on the right is the ones with all of my white books. And then just in this corner here are my transitional shades where I've got like five books which are like a creamy, yellowy, beigey gold. How rude. I'm going to talk to you first about the white books that are kind of in here because obviously they are part of my white book cube but they're just not in that cube. So the first book that I'm going to grab is Generation by Paula McGrath. Now I'm going to be talking about this in my August wrap up but I thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed it. The basic premise is about this Irish woman who has just gone through a divorce and she has See, it's funny, I say that I really fully, thoroughly enjoy it. I can't remember like the really minute details. And also it's a shame because I didn't start annotating until literally just recently. So, ah, annoying, but never mind, I digress. The book is basically following loads of different linears. So each chapter is a character and you're just following this story about this woman who wants to go to this farm in the US and she wants to kind of like be free and discover herself with her, with her kid. And it's all about the people that they meet and how their stories interlink and it's so so good i will be describing it in more detail later on so keep your eyes peeled for that video because i have got so much to say about this book blissmo 
milf. So I'm just going to slot that back then. Do, 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 do. The next book I have is Stephen King It. So I pulled this out in my recent TBR um, video, so feel free to go check that out. It's down in the description. But this is definitely a big boy. And I bought this with no pre-existing knowledge about the author and this, his, his, his writing style. And I've never seen the movies and I actually am terrified of horror. So this is probably not a good buy for me, but I'm gonna try and push myself. This is on my TBR. I'm not gonna lie. I don't think it's gonna get read this month because I have put my focus elsewhere and that's fine. But obviously this is included in my white books. Then the next book that I have, which obviously fits, ooh, which fits in again because of the spine, is Vampire Night by Matsuri Hino. Hino, Hino. My apologies if I got that wrong. Again, this is one that I picked out for my TBR. I think I'm going to read this this month. I think it's more than achievable. So stay tuned for that. There you go. So Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. I read this book last month and I thought it was really really good. I can't remember what I gave it out of five. Obviously I'll leave the link in the description for the previous video if you want to check it out. But this is a book that I really really enjoyed and I think others should read it. It's, it is all about a pandemic and I did struggle with that. It was a bit heavy obviously for what we're going through at the moment but I wouldn't write it off if you are not as sensitive towards that type of thing. Like if stuff's really similar to real life and it makes you uncomfortable i maybe wouldn't suggest reading this because it does kind of does kind of hit home a bit but other than that i highly highly recommend it then i've got albert Camus, the outsider this is another book that i read in july and i gave it a five out of five i think this is a phenomenal book and it's one that's going to stay on my shelf forever and ever and ever and i just recommend that people should pick it up because i just thought it was phenomenal the next book that I have is Kylie Reed, Such a Fun Age. So I picked this up from my independent bookstore in Sheffield recently. And this is one that I've been seeing circulating on booktube quite frequently. So I wanted to get my slice of the pie and pick it up. The next book that I have is another manga called A Devil and Her Love Song by Miyoshi Tom. Miyoshi Tamori. I'm gonna blame it on my Yorkshire accent. It smells so good. I will obviously get round to reading it. I plan on reading everything on my bookshelf, but I think this one might come sooner, sooner than I think, because I think I'm gonna really take to manga. And I also wanna delve more into graphic novel side of things. I keep on seeing a lot of people reading them and I really wanna get on that. So yeah, this might be a nice little gateway book drug. The next book that I have on my lap is Rivers of London by Ben Aronovich and again I don't really have any clue as to what this is about. I know that there's magic involved and I know it's got so obviously something to do with London but I know that my mum really enjoyed it and she has bought the rest of this series so I'm reading it so me and my mum can talk about it and you know I me and my mum have kind of similar book tastes I think I'm not too sure if I'm honest. I'm gonna presume that we do. So I trust her judgment. If she says it's a good book, then it's a good book. So I'm gonna read it. Obviously, my opinion could be different, but that's the plan. So I'm, that's Rivers of London. Woohoo. The next book that I have is The Rosie Project by Graham Simpson. I believe that's how uh, his last name is pronounced. And I think that this book is all about people trying to create the perfect match through science. Like they are treating finding your one true love as a scientific exploration, I believe. I'm not too sure. That's just what I've picked up from the back. I'm not gonna lie. I picked it up because I enjoyed the front cover. It's a lobster with a little heart and I enjoyed the font of the title. It was enticing to me. And also I love romance. I am a killer for romance. I will kill for romance. The next book that I have here is Dorothy Coombson's The Flavour of Love. So the premise of this book is um, the protagonist, I'm not sure of her name, the protagonist is making a cookbook and her husband has been murdered and they never found the killer. And the killer has 
started to write to her. That is very bits and bits and pieces. Um, but that's the best I can do for you, I'm afraid. Okay, so the next book that I have is uh, Irvin, Irvin Welsh, I'm going to just go for it, is Irvin Welsh and it is Train Spotting. Now, I've never read this book and I have never seen the first film. I went on a date ages ago with this guy and pretended that I'd seen the first one and read the book because we went to see Train Spotting 2. But I was too embarrassed to say that I hadn't seen it, so I was sat watching this film so, so confused. And I'm really excited for the day when I finally understand what that film was about. So here's to Train Spotting. The next book that I have here is The Opposite of Loneliness, which is a collection of essays and stories by Marina Keegan. It says that this book captures hope, uncertainty, and the possibility of her generation and articulates the universal struggle that all of us face as we figure out what we aspire to be. So that sounds lush right now. We're all in a bit of a limbo at the moment and I think this might be nice. I might actually put this in my TBR pile. I'm gonna do it. I've just wedged that on in there. Anyway, moving on. The next book I have is A Clockwork Orange, the restored edition by Anthony Burgess. I bought the book and it's written in the colloquias, I can't say the words, colloquialisms, 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 I'm not sure. But yeah, so the language that's used in the book, it is extremely confusing. And I've tried to pick this up and read it before and I just, it wasn't hitting it, it wasn't hitting the, the, the spot that I needed it to. So I think I'm just gonna wait until I have that uncontrollable urge to read it because I think you definitely have to be in the right frame of mind to be able to comprehend what's going on like I don't even know how to describe it I think visual aids from the film is just a lot easier to kind of understand what's going on so let me just try and read a bit out what it like is is lashings of ultra violence and the old in out in out but not in solvos except where the Chelovex are govereating but the vex you can vidi and not have to send the old gulliver the to spatchka with like being bored when you are on your sharries in a bill in a biblio it's not just that you can read and be like ah yes i know exactly what you're talking about so i think this is definitely one way you have to be in the mood for so the next book that I'm going to talk about is Memoirs of a Geisha by Arthur Golden. Now this film when I was growing up used to be one of my absolute favourites. I was obsessed. I would always ask my mum to watch the film with me. I freaking love this book. And my mum says that the book is just so so much better. And do you know what? It's been sitting waiting for me and I've just never got round to it. But the day will come because I am honestly so ready to revisit my love for that film and obviously because it's derived from the book I can only imagine how amazing that this book is going to be. If you can't tell I've got high expectations and I think I might cry if they don't live up to them so fingers crossed. So the next book that I have is The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Shabosky, I believe that's how it's pronounced and I really didn't like the film version of this. I've not read the book and again apparently the book is a lot better. That's just kind of standard really. But I've kind of always been hesitant just because of my opinion on the film. I think the reason why I have that opinion is just, I don't know, maybe I just watched it a little bit too young. I wasn't a fan of the acting in it. I remember that's something that sticks out to me in my memory. But I'm willing to read it and give it a go, you know, a lot of people talk about it and also it's not that big of a book. The next book that I have is The One That Got Away by Melissa Pimentel and it's all set at a wedding. Basically, yeah, so basically what happens is the, the pair break up, then they meet years later at a mutual friend's wedding and the guy that she broke up with is the best man and then she's there deliberating whether she made the right choice all those years ago. So that's that book. <laughs> the next book that I have is The Pocket Roomie. All of these poems are by, I'm so sorry if I get this pronunciation wrong, Mevlana Jalaluddin Rumi. 
and I picked this up a while ago when I was doing my A-levels. I think we wanted to try and find some poetry to include in our practical piece in drama and I thought that this looked really intriguing so I picked it up. I just think that the cover looks nice and I've not actually read any of the poems in it. I never got around to it but I will soon. So the first one that I have here is Dorothy Coombson, Ice Cream Girls and this is the book that I read and I highly highly recommend it. I'm really looking forward to rereading it. I don't want to give anything away because the ending is so satisfactory from what I can remember and I would just highly highly recommend anybody read it and as you can see it's kind of cream. I don't think that you care about the spines of my books but I'm doing it from colour so I'm going to show you the colour you know the transitions and things. I am doing them in the order that they are on my bookshelf. So the next book that I have is Elementary Murder by AJ Wright. I don't know too much about this. I think I picked this up from a charity shop when I was younger and it's set in 1894 and it's all about a murder that happens in an elementary school and that's all I know. I've recently just read Woman in the Window by AJ Finn which was kind of like this murder mystery-esque book and I really enjoyed it so I think I could potentially enjoy this one as well. I think murder just does something for me. So the next book I'm going to talk to you about is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes and I have no desire to read this book I don't think I think this is probably one of the books on my shelves that I'm least excited about I don't know why I think the cover makes me feel weird about it I've seen the film and I did really really enjoy the film I just don't I there's no rhyme or reason I'm just not particularly drawn to this book so full stop anyway that's the beige then the gold we're in with the gold. So this is John Gray's Men Are From Mars or Women Are From Venus. I saw this quoted in a movie one time and I wanted it because I was curious. I don't think I care as much for the contents as I did when I first bought it. It's not something that I think I'm particularly interested in. So there you go. Alrighty. So the last book that I have is The Girl With All The Traits by M.R. Carey and I don't really know what this is about. All I know is... I don't know. She's this kind of girl who obviously has multiple powers, says in the title. I'm really really intrigued by this book actually. I feel like I'm intrigued by the majority of books I bought. Otherwise I wouldn't have bought them. They're all my white books you know, the ones that I consider to be in my white section of the bookshelf. I hope that you guys enjoyed me showing you the books and giving you a really shoddy description of what they could possibly be about. I'm really really looking forward to doing the rest. I think there's a lot of books that I am excited to talk about and excited to read. Feel free to comment down below how you organise your books. Do you do colour like me or are you more of an author person or genre or or, or what's another way, just alphabetical, I don't know. How do you do it? Let me know. I find it interesting. Cool, cool, cool. So thank you guys. Thank you guys for sticking around to the end. I really appreciate it if you have made it this far. I'm really, really excited to continue my bookshelf journey with you. That is all I have to say on the matter of the subject and Join me next week when we will be going through my red, pink, orange section, the warm, I call it the warm, ooh, the warm section. Yeah, so come join me next week. So without further ado, I'm gonna go and I'll see you in the next one. Sick, bye.